Hello, watch enthusiasts. Now, today I'd like to talk about the finishing of a watch in terms of its case and dial and movement in this uh, in this particular video. And the reason I'm making this video is because um, I I've been asked by various people what I would recommend in terms of the best finished watches at various price points. Therefore, I'd like to address this in, in one uh, video to talk about the, the, the best finishing on watches uh, from everything from the £1,000 and below price tag through to the, the £50,000 price tag. Because it's true that uh, that many brands competing in the same segment offer very different features in terms of the finishing of their watches, both internally in terms of the, the movements and dials, but also externally in terms of cases and bracelets. And therefore I'd like to talk about this today to really show which brands I feel have the best craftsmanship when it comes to producing a, an elegantly produced and, uh, and very precisely produced watch. Now the first brand I'd like to talk about is Oris. And Oris have become very well known for the quality of their watches um, around the £800 mark and up. And the reason for this is really the, the, how, how fine the, the finishes on their watches are. Now, for instance, the brushing on the sides of, um, for example, an Oris Aquis, their primary dive watch, is extremely fine and a much finer grain than is seen on other watches around this price point, and is really more comparable to a watch in the £2,000 or £3,000 price tag from my observations of handling these pieces and owning them. And, uh, and I've found that really the brushing of these watches is far more comparable to Omega than their, um, than their direct competitors, notably uh, uh, brands like Christopher Ward, Squale, Hamilton and, uh, and Tissot. Now this is also shown in the way in which the brand uses polished finishes to emphasise the shape of a case, um, and, and I'll get onto the case design in just a moment. But with, with regards to the polishing on these watches, what's very impressive about the way they finish the cases and bracelets on these watches is that for this price they actually achieve a proper mirror finish. And this may seem like an obvious aspect to a, a watch, really, if you have a polished finish, it should be mirror finished. But this really isn't the case um, around this price point and below, where a great deal of polished watches um, have, have a very um, a highly shiny finish, but don't have that uniform polished finish that one finds on the Orises, for instance, and also brands uh, in, in uh, much higher up brackets. But in terms of this price point, they really do offer the best finish in terms of uh, polishing, which offers a, a true reflection of light, which, which is a, a pleasure to look at and, and really does help the, the shape of the watch and make it look altogether more aesthetically pleasing. Of course, Oris also do an extremely good job of combining brushed and polished finishes to form a, a far more attractive case. And whereas I find that a great deal of cases that are only brushed or only polished, especially in watches with, with quite heavy bracelets, can look a little bit too uniform and, uh, and a little bit too, uh, too bold in their appearance. In this case, by using these finishes to break up the shape of the watch, they're able to create a very interesting form for the eye, which is combined with the fact that they produce very, very well-made sunburst dials in various colours, um, with applied indices, with facets, and so on, which really do ha serve to catch the light and make the watch look all the more appealing to, to the viewer. This also does help legibility if one has very, very high-quality luminescence in the watches, and, and well-polished hands, which catch the light very well. Similarly, the tolerances on these watches are extremely slim, from the clasps on bracelets to the clasps on certain straps, um, to, the, to the way in which the crowns screw in and the way the bezels turn. The, the tolerances are extremely small, which is um, abnormal, I feel, for this price point, apart from certain brands like Zinn or Damasco, for instance, um, that don't have the same uh, aesthetic uh, quality as these watches, um, but do have the same, um, the, the same quality of finish. Um, but certainly I feel one's getting an extremely good combination of, of finishing and, uh, and build quality in these models, um, which is especially good for this, this price point. Now the second brand I'd like to talk about is Grand Seiko. And Grand Seiko, as of this year, has become its, its, its own independent brand, separate from Seiko as a, as a separate entity, really. And the reason why I'm mentioning them in this video is because I feel they make some of the most elegantly produced and, uh, and well-shaped uh, and finished cases um, movements and dials as a whole uh, really in the business and especially uh, for their uh, their lower end section um, between uh, say 2000 and and 10000 um, pounds and of course this is rather a wide price bracket but they produce excellent watches across this entire um, this entire breadth if you will um, with the same quality of finishing and, and case uh, design. Throughout its history, Grand Seiko has really always put an emphasis on very complex case designs with many facets and, and very uh, aggressive beveling and, um, and polishing uh, combined with 
with a great deal of, of slim and, uh, and, and in some ways um, quite discreet brushed sections, which combine to create an extremely attractive case which has a much more flowing form than the cases of, for instance, Rolex or Omega, um, which have much tighter lines. In this case, the lines are perfectly considered, but much more, more loose, um, which I think leads to uh, a very, very attractive finish, and one which is all the more difficult to achieve. This utterly relentless attention to detail is shown throughout the watch in terms of the combinations of parts which go together extraordinarily well and are very, very well considered, which really defines this brand and separates it from other brands which perhaps don't put quite as much emphasis on ensuring that everything goes together um, as a, a unit, um, which I think really does make a difference with a watch to the fact that it's so well considered and so well um, uh, conjoined, if you will, uh, as a single piece which is designed to be a watch in its own right rather than have influences from various places. Now the movement finishing on these watches is also a, a real um, a wonder to behold. It doesn't take the same intricate form that one often sees in the, the, the high horology from Switzerland um, or Germany where, where really there's a great deal of decoration on every part. But here rather every part is finished with the, the utmost attention to, to detail and care to form bevels around the bridges within the movements um, and finish the, the rotors in, in a matching manner. Um, as, as well as really showcasing their technology, notably spring drive, which is one of my personal favourite technologies in the watch industry, whereby rather than having a standard escapement with an oscillating um, balance wheel, you have a, a, a magnetic brake, an electromagnetic brake if you will, um, which slows the release of energy of the spring and therefore allows uh, a small um, electric motor um, as a result of the, um, the effect of a current being made by a movement uh, passing through a magnetic field. Um, allows a, a small motor to be driven to turn the hands with no, um, no, no, no shuddering at all that one would normally see in the mechanical movement. And it's all this technology that is combined to produce a watch which is really extremely well considered, especially for this price point. Of course, Grand Seiko dials have also become extremely well known for their very intricate finishing um, in various interesting colours, and also for their, their various levels, which, uh, which truly do produce a, a wonderful finish to the dial, and of course, famous models like the Snowflake um, spring drive uh, models, have gained a great deal of popularity as a result of their, their beautifully finished dials um, and different facets which often seem in a sense um, utilitarian while also being luxurious which is a very difficult combination to hit off when you're making a luxury sports watch. However, if it's dial finishing that one's looking for from the, the 5000 uh, and onwards uh, price point I would say uh, Gigi Le Coutre is really the company to go to. Now, Gigi Le Coutre are a brand with an incredible history producing movements for Patek Philippe, uh, Vacheron Constantin, uh, and Audemars Piguet. They produce movements for all three of the Holy Trinity, um, which is something that can't be said for most brands. Um, but certainly in this, uh, in this video, I should be focusing on their, their case design, their case quality, and also their dial uh, finishing, which truly is exemplary in my opinion. Now, uh, for instance, they're able to produce dials with such intricacy, with a, an effortless charm, notably their, their blue Memovox models, um, are, are superbly finished, have a, uh, a sunburst effect while also having a matted effect um, in, in various degrees and thicknesses to create a depth to a dial when actually one has a simple flat plane on the dial, which is a, a skill which really isn't seen a great deal, especially in, um, in watches around this price point where really one would have to reach higher to, to find watches around this, uh, this, this, uh, this sort of quality and focused on producing dials of such a beautiful nature. Now one detail to their dials which is more apparent on their chronographs is they're able, by using uh, particular fonts and, uh, and particular dial layouts, to create a dial which should appear cluttered, but to the eye actually appears very clean and very well considered and well designed to offer a, a high legibility, also offering all the elegance one would expect from an old brand of this nature. In terms of cases, the brand really do take simplicity to heart, as they produce watches with a combination of brushed and polished finishes, with bevels and all the details that one would expect from a watch of this price but combine them in such a way as to make them look extremely simple and elegant without the, um, the emphasis put on these finishes, but rather uh, the emphasis put on them to make them so discreet they, 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 they disappear before the eye, um, which is again a real sign of the skill going into these cases, um, which aren't necessarily designed for, for um, durability, but rather simply for aesthetic beauty. And again, this is seen on watches like the, J the JLC Reverso, um, with its very elegant strakes going across it, which are very difficult to make in that sort of precision and accuracy, but really do lend to a, a far more attractive watch once added. Now the next brand is Audemars Piguet, and this is a brand which is often talked about uh, due to their Royal Oak, um, which has become a, a real design classic as a result of its design by Gerald Genta in the 1970s, um, released in the 1972 Baselworld. 
but really it's the finishing of these watches that I'd like to talk about, because I do feel that they make the best finished cases and bracelets in the industry full stop. Um, now, of course, this is my opinion, but I do feel that the, the uniform nature of their finishing really does exceed that that um, of other watches made, uh, especially in the area. Um, and in fact, in my opinion, even um, overleaps the um, the quality of finishing of brands like Bedeg Philippe, who tend to focus primarily on, on polished surfaces, which are extremely well done, but the quality here really is superb. And I, I can understand why they're able to do this, and the reason for this is that the Royal Oak, for instance, in steel, comes in at well over £10,000, um, and this is a substantial uh, increase and uh, la large margin above other steel sports watches, or sports slash dress watches in this case. And as a result, they're able to focus a great deal more of their money on the finishing of the watch, as opposed to simply producing the watch. So in that respect, they really do produce some incredible pieces. And for example, the brushing on these models I do find to be utterly exemplary, because for instance, their bracelets on the, the sides of the links of their bracelets, originally there are um, there are rods pushed through, obviously, to hold the bracelet together. But these are, are spot welded and then rebrushed, so that there is no mark of the fact that the um, the links are not uh, solid pieces, which is um, an attention to detail which really isn't seen elsewhere. Now, furthermore, the edges on these watches are extremely crisp and among the most crisp in uh, in the watch industry. And this is, is all the more impressive when one finds out that the cases are hand-finished in terms of the finishing on their surface. This is all done by hand, so it does show the craftsmanship going into these watches. And this is best uh, shown on the bezels, for instance, of the Royal Oak, um, where one has these extremely well-designed um, bezels with very, very clear definition, which simply can't be seen um, and, is, and is actually proven to be so difficult to, to reproduce uh, in, by the fact that... Uh, when a great deal of people try to refinish them as a result of scratches, they end up actually removing the original shape. And, and this really is a testament to what a delicate and discreet um, process that these watches go through uh, to create these, these forms which are, are, are so, uh, so clearly defined. Now the movement finishing on these watches is also superb, where one sees the real craftsmanship that goes into these movements to make them slimmer um, and better finished. Of course, some of their movements are based on JLC calibers, notably the ones in their, their extra th uh, slim line. But, uh, but nonetheless, they're extremely beautifully finished with Coupe de Genève and Perlage and various um, bevels cut into the bridges to, 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 to soften off the shapes while keeping a crisp and defined finish. Similarly, the rotors on there, their automatic movements, are extremely well crafted um, to, to really give the, the most attractive finish uh, to the wearer. Similarly, the tapisserie dials seen on these watches are, are again extremely well finished to give a, a wonderful um, a myriad of different colours from blues to greys in different lights which is again a sign of a really well-made dial, the fact that it catches light and really does play with it um, in this particular way. And of course they're quite a playful brand in terms of trying new finishes with their cases and dials. Um, of course a good example of that are the new frosted gold models, where small impacts are put into the gold uh, by a sort of a chisel, if you will, which gives this very soft, um, uh, frosted style of uh, finish to the gold, uh, which is, is utterly unique in the watch industry and really is a lovely thing to see. Now the final brand I'd like to talk about is Breguet, who in my opinion produce some of the most wonderful cases in, in terms of the, um, the finishes that they, they achieve, notably the, uh, the coin edge rolling of metal that they, um, that they use to produce those wonderful edges to their circular cases, which is, isn't seen very often and is very difficult to produce with metals. Um, and though they don't tend to feature a great deal of brushing, most of their cases are fully polished. This does really show the craftsmanship that goes into their gold and platinum cases. Similarly, the small details in their cases truly are a wonder to behold, with uh, little details, uh, such as the way the, the lugs curl over on a great deal of their, their dress models from their classique line, as well as the fact that they have these, these very large domed crystals, which again are, are perfectly lined to, um, to follow the lines of the case and produce an altogether more aesthetically pleasing uh, package. Um, which, which really is combined beautifully with the various other features they put in, including their complications and their dials, to create a, uh, a watch which can either be extremely complex or very, very simple, but in both, both occasions extremely elegant. Now similarly, Breguet are masterful with their dial creations from their, their very simple uh, porcelain um, Grand Feu dials produced and released at Baselworld this year, with very elegant dips into this, uh, this uh, enamel porcelain dial. Um, which is of course the most most uh, simple um, of their dial designs, through to the extremely complex finished metal ones um, on their more ornate models, um, notably the um, the classic chronometrie, for instance. Again, one of my favourites from the brand. 
Now really these dials are finished with a, a multitude of different finishes, everything from brushed uh, finishes to a hobnail style finishes to gouache um, patterns, all to, to create a, a more uh, attractive dial when, when the light hits it and really does capture that um, that very traditional and simple aesthetic that Breguet tend to, 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 to use, while also showing a refinement that really isn't seen very often. And this is even carried on into their, 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 their sports range, the Type 20, Type 21, and Type 22, um, where one has these, these models which are, on the face of it, uh, very, um, uh, very committed sports watches, if you will. But if one looks a little bit deeper, have extremely beautifully um, decorated movements, um, with some of the most exquisite rotors placed on the movements, and also with, um, uh, with some fantastic uh, work on the dial to create different levels, and, and create an altogether more interesting watch for this sort of price point. Of course, really, on all Breguets, the view through the case back is always superb, with, uh, with beveled edges, uh, beautifully decorated movements, um, and also a very attractive labelling of the parts, which is a, an initiative which I feel is a very good idea, um, and it has been seen on various Omegas, but I must say here, it really does, um, does work extremely well with the movement altogether, to give a really beautiful view of, of what exactly is going on behind the face of a watch. Anyway, I'll conclude the video here, but thank you very much for watching, and uh, do please leave your comments down below as to what you thought of the, the video and uh, of my, my choices of what I think are some of the best finished uh, watches in, in the watch industry. And do leave your, uh, your views down below as to what you would have perhaps have, inc have included, because I really am always interested to hear your opinion on, on these subjects. So thank you very much for watching. If you did enjoy the video, then please do like, share, and subscribe to help the channel and to enjoy more content in future. This is Arm on the Watch Guy, over and out.